What's up guys, Nick the Trainer here. Welcome back to another episode of the Science Explained. So I'm a little bummed about this episode because in all the previous episodes there's uh, studies that I reference and I, I link them down below and I put them up on the screen so you guys can see them. This one, uh, I am going to be referencing a study, although I wasn't able to find it again. This was uh, a study that I originally found from a PowerPoint lecture in a previous exercise science course that I took. Um, so I don't have the actual study to reference you guys, but I'm just going to, I remember it pretty well, so I'm going to explain to all like the key points from it. So <clears throat> we had a, I had a, one of the topics we talked about in this class was the correct way to do high intensity interval training. Um, which for those of you who don't know, it's basically like you do a sprint of some exercise and then you rest and then you sprint again, go back and forth like that. So it's like an alternative way of doing cardio. Now, one of the things that we talked about is there is actually an ideal ratio of work to rest when you're doing hit cardio. So the ideal ratio is a one to three work to recovery ratio where Let's say if you do like a 15 second sprint, then you would want to rest for at least 45 seconds before doing another sprint. Um, this was, I thought this was pretty interesting because originally I just thought that, you know, you could do hit cardio however you wanted and it was equally effective, but apparently that's not true and I'm going to explain to you guys why that is. So, uh, important distinction here is the difference between intensity, workout intensity and effort. So a lot of people confuse the two. Um, so like, if let's say you're doing circuit training and you're going like really, really fast paced, like you're you're doing tons of work, and you're not really resting very much, and most people would think like, oh yeah, like such an intense workout, like it's really high intensity workout. Um, but actually, it's not. Um, that's more of just a high effort workout. Um, and I'll let me explain why. So working out at your highest intensity is basically doing like an exercise or something at the like the absolute highest capacity that you possibly could. Um, and one important thing about intensity is that exercise intensity is the number one factor when it comes to caloric expenditure during a workout, not effort. Um, so for example, let's say I'm doing bench press, right? It's the beginning of my workout, I'm already warmed up, did my warm sets, and let's say I do six reps with 315. And this set was an absolute max set. I, there's no way I could have done another rep. That was my absolute highest intensity. I put all the effort I could into it, right? And then I go on with my workout, I do a full chest workout, like an hour and a half, totally exhausted. At the end, I go back to bench press and I'm gonna do another six rep max set. But this time, since I'm already fatigued and I'm at the end of my workout, I, I can't do as much weight, right? So let's say I only do like 275, 265 for six reps. and my effort was the exact same. I gave it everything that I had. There's no way I could have done the rep. I went to absolute failure, just like I did on the first set at the beginning of my workout. Now, the effort between both of these sets is the same, right? I went to failure. I couldn't have done another rep, but the intensity is decreased at the end because I couldn't lift as much weight. I wasn't working at my absolute highest capacity, right? Because my absolute highest capacity is when I'm fully fresh, I'm not fatigued, so what this means is that the set that I did at the end, I burned less calories because my intensity was decreased, right? So that's kind of the, the difference between effort and intensity, right? Your effort could be the same, but your intensity is not. And just because you're putting higher effort, that doesn't lead to, or doesn't have the same relation to caloric expenditure as intensity does. Now, going back to hit cardio, so the study that I'm going to be talking about is basically they looked at doing different um, work to recovery ratios and one of the ones that they looked at was the one to three ratio. Now the reason why the one to three ratio is the best is because that's the amount of time that it takes for your energy systems and like your body to recover from the sprint that you did. Right? So if you so let's say like you're doing hit cardio and you do like a 30 second sprint and then 30 seconds of rest. By the time you do the next sprint, um, that 30 seconds that you had isn't enough time for your body to recover from the 30 second sprint that you did. So let's say you're, you're doing like a stationary bike, right? So you do like an all out 30 second sprint, then you, let's say you're doing the sprint at like level 14 or whatever the bike's got, I don't know. Um, and then you 
then you do your recovery period that's like on level six or whatever you're just cruising riding the bike easy and then you go back to your next sprint and let's say you go back to the same level you go back to 14 you're not going to be or the intensity is going to be decreased right because you're already going to be fatigued so you're not going to be able to work out at your highest capacity right so let's say you're the first one your rpms were like over 100 and the second one your rpms right like the how many cycles you're doing cycles um pedaling is going to be decreased on the second one because your body didn't have enough time to recover from the first sprint so as you go on through your, your hit session you're under recovering yourself in between those recoveries recovery periods which means your intensity is going to constantly going to decrease and you know a lot of people do cardio just to burn calories right and also for good health but if you're not resting enough in between your work ratios your intensity is going to decrease which means you're going to be burning less and less calories so <clears throat> what this study found was so one of they looked at like a one to three ratio and then they looked at a different ratio which was like i don't know exactly what it was maybe it was like a one to two ratio or one to one ratio. And what they found was that after the whole session, the amount of calories that was like burned between each group was almost identical. Um, it was, there was only like, I think a six calorie difference, but the group that was under recovering, they had to do like twice as much work, right? Because they were spending less time recovering and more time doing actual work, but that didn't lead to burning more calories. So the group that, so let's say like they just, they did like a 15 second sprint and then they, they just chilled for 45 seconds, right? Before they did the next sprint. And the benefit of that is, as I mentioned before, that's the amount of time it takes for your body to recover or like get close to recover. So you can keep working out at your absolute highest intensity. And you know, that's what high intensity interval training is. If you're not recovering enough, your intensity is going to decrease and then you're no longer doing high intensity interval training. Now, Another important finding uh, from the studies that at the end they, they I guess gave the participants like a questionnaire to fill out that was basically um, them to report like how they felt about the study like did was it or like the exercise protocol like did they enjoy it or whatever, and the group that did the one to three ratio said that they enjoyed it much much more. Now this is an important application for trainers because you know one of the important things you need to focus on is you know, how to keep your clients engaged and like interested in the workouts. And if you don't like the workouts that you're doing, it's less likely that you're going to do them. So just from, you know, that standpoint, it makes sense to exercise in the way that's easier and like more enjoyable for people. And also turns out that you can do less work and burn the same amount of calories. So those were the, the main findings from the study. Um, it's, I think it was a really good study because it shows that, you know, Basically, you can do less work and still get just an effective workout in, uh, which is pretty cool because like cardio freaking sucks, right? Like who wants to do that shit? You know, fuck that. Um, and it's it makes cardio like so much easier because like that's you know you can do a 15 second sprint and then just chill for five seconds and then just do that 10 times and you just got a really good cardio session in and you feel like you hardly even did anything. So. That's all I have for this video. If you guys did like this, uh, make sure you guys thumbs up because it really does help my channel. Um, makes it more likely that people will see the video. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. There is gonna be a part two, maybe in a part three to this video because there's um, like tons of science of the benefits of doing HIIT cardio. So in future videos, I'm gonna you know, like go over tons of studies about all the findings of HIIT cardio. So make sure you guys check back for that later. Um, hopefully I'll do that soon, better do that soon. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.